Good evening and welcome to the June meeting of the Operations Committee. Today we have 17 mm -hmm. items under consent. Would either of you like any of the 17 items pulled for discussion? No. Nope. No, Madam Chair. Okay, we thank all of our staff members who worked so hard on those 17 items. Moving on to discussion, our first item is the Strategic Energy Action Plan. Ms. Barrett. Good evening, Council. For your consideration tonight is the town's first Strategic Energy Action Plan. This plan was developed as part of the Department of Energy's Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program. The plan includes an energy reduction goal with an associated energy management plan for town operations. It includes electricity, natural gas, propane, gasoline, diesel, and biodiesel. This plan is near term enough to be meaningful to staff, acknowledges the operational and service driven nature of our organization, <coughs> and addresses the key energy using categories of town oper operations, which are water and wastewater, fleet, and buildings and streetlights. <laughs> the overall goal is a 13% reduction of energy use from the projected 2020 business as usual energy estimate for town operations. Staff estimates that once attained, this reduction in energy use will result in a yearly avoided cost of approximately $1.5 million and a yearly reduction of 7,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Your environmental advisory board assisted in the development of this plan, providing both input and feedback. Staff recommends that council approve the strategic energy action plan. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Great, okay, questions? Um, no, first off, I'd like to thank you and the environmental advisory board. I thought I've had an opportunity to look at Okay, I read the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I really enjoyed reading how you took a very measured approach to each component. And um, you and I have discussed via email some other options um, with regards to additional programs and looking at um, programs that might involve the networking technology and the energy usage there. And I see that Mr. Stice is in the audience as well. So I think adding some of those components uh, would be quite relevant and might actually have you beat your estimate, you know, by all by all kinds of measures. So thanks for for that feedback. Thank you, okay. Mr. Smith. Any comments or questions about it? No, well thought out. Thank you. Okay, I found it very impressive that the annual savings are projected to be 1.5 million over the baseline, and that. Um, it's just absolutely incredible to me because so often we don't hear um, environmental pr practices being paired up with cost savings. A lot of times people think it's just all more expensive and that it doesn't pay off, that if it's good for the environment, that's gonna cost you more. Mm -hmm. So this is um, really excellent to see. And I look forward to seeing it, it you know, come to fruition and hearing um, updates from the staff to the council so that we can see how accurately we are hitting those goals. So that's, I think that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions, then we'll go ahead and forward this to the council under consent for approval and encourage our fellow council members to take a look at the plan because it is, it is very good reading. Okay, thank you very thank you, much, council. Okay, our second item is the fiscal year 2012 street, street improvements, mm -hmm. Mr. Bailey. Good evening, Council. Each year we have a comprehensive um, pavement maintenance program on a project within the town of Cary to resurface our local roads. Those are usually the minor roads within subdivisions. Um, what we don't cover is the four lane roads or the major thoroughfares that were managed by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. We do this based on a ranking system of the streets to determine the condition of the streets, and we bring a list to you earlier in the year that was uh, for your consideration. This is uh, consideration of several items. First, the bid award. Um, we receive bids and we have a low bidder rate contracting, um, and we also are recommending that we award an alternate for <coughs> picking up a piece of uh, a state-maintained road that we've recently received. We also want to look at doing a pilot project on a few streets with some extra money to do what's called a surface, tr uh, a sort of a seal coat, similar to like you would see in a McDonald's parking lot where you put a layer of asphalt uh, just to seal up cracks and see what type of life that will help us. It's much 
cheaper um, and could be beneficial, but we've never done that in the past in Cary, so we want to do that on a couple of pallet streets. It's a little different than the parking lot treatments. It has a little bit of aggregate and it's a little thicker, but it's a similar concept. The third thing we wanted to make you aware of is um, we are looking at changing sort of our maintenance system and we'll be making some recommendations next year as part of our street um, list to consider maybe a different approach. Sometimes when you wait till streets get older and start to fail, you end up spending a lot of money on them and you may be doing it on some really low volume streets and there might be some opportunities looking at a better method for asset management for our pavements that could save us money and reduce costs. So we may have some different recommendations next year and just wanted to give you some information about that. The contractor we've hired to do ratings and some of the systems that we put in place this year are getting us set up for that next year. So with that, I'll, um, I'll repeat the recommendation and uh, well, and I will not read it all, just a summary. We recommend that we award the contract um, to rate contracting for the amount of $1,252,683.60, which includes the bid alternate. And we recommend that we be able to use some of these surface treatments on streets by change order as we have additional funds in the project. Okay. Mr. Smith, do you have any comments or questions? Actually, I have a question regarding what you said about uh, next year mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't know if this is a uh, in your domain or public works but if, if you have streets or cul-de-sacs that are beginning to um, show excessive wear and you've got grass growing through is that something we want to encourage so that we can get out and not make the situation worse so that or how, how do you what do you recommend because I'm seeing a lot more of that um, first of all, if, if there is an immediate need, Public Works does the annual routine things on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if there's a pothole or a significant crack, they can do something to address that. Um, this project focuses on more of that overall contract maintenance that we do. But that's a very good point. That's exactly what we are looking at as a ways to maybe address those situations on some of the minor streets, but do it more cheaply. One example is um, by taking some of those cracks and doing a, a crack sealing project. It uses sort of a flexible rubber asphalt. You blow out all the grass and the debris and you crack seal it. And then if there's a concern about that look, you might would do one of these surface treatments like, in, like I mentioned earlier. And that alone may give you a, a very long life on a road with a very low volume, but maybe at a third to half the cost of overlaying the entire street. Um, so it's, it's something very new for us. It's certainly you're gonna have to approve that when it comes back, but we just wanted to, you to be aware we're looking at things like that. Um, combination of the current economy, as the staff report indicates, we're kind of, we're not keeping up as well as we'd like with our street maintenance. So we're looking at more innovative ways to stretch our dollars as much as we can. And so there may be something a little different um, approach next year for your consideration. Thank you. Okay, I had a question for you. Many times over the past several years, we've talked about the difference in the soil content west of Preston and that area. And you've mentioned to me how when um, NCDOT has come in to build roads that they have to build the asphalt to a different standard. How is that impacting the life of those streets out there versus the ones that are further east? Okay. Anything west of about Cary Parkway is in a different soil. It's a Triassic basin that creates some very unique clay soils. And those areas do not have the same bearing capacity in the soil as the other areas of town. What we do out there within Cary is we require those areas to have a thicker pavement section and require often um, by our standard specs that a pavement design be done um, instead of just in the rest of the area of town, we have sort of a proven method of um, eight inches of asphalt and about two inches of, uh, excuse me, two inches of asphalt on about eight inches of stone. And that's proven to work well in most areas of town, but it does not in the western areas of town. Um, so we are seeing thicker pavements traditionally, and usually we have a detailed pavement analysis that is sealed by an engineer, and the life cycle is supposed to target a 20 year life cycle. So we're, tr we're trying to achieve the same life cycle okay and therefore the pavement section gets thicker. So in, in the end of the day, we should have a similar maintenance program for both because the in initial pavement was thicker and that's how we've tried to address it in the past with, uh, within our town's policies. And have we been doing that? If we go back 20 years to when Preston was being developed, did, were we using those practices back then? It was just after Preston. It, it, um, okay. Our standards have probably been in place 
um, 14 or 15 years to require a pavement mm -hmm. design and a lot of those things. And we have okay. we have rebuilt a lot of streets in Preston because of that. Um, okay. Some of them were very early on in Preston um, that didn't last but about five or six years and we had to do some significant maintenance. So okay. that's one of the areas we learned from and increased our standards in much of the other areas. Okay. People downtown have told me that their streets have never been repaved. Little, you know, areas, pockets of downtown carry. Is it because 40 years ago the practices for putting down those roads were different or better than what they are now? Or is it just the, the soil content? Why is it that those roads have held so well? Um, one, one reason probably, some of the, a lot of those streets were gravel. Um, there's an aerial engineering from the 1950s and a lot of the roadway network was downtown was there, but it was okay. gravel. Okay. So it was not disturbed and excavated like a new street is and it gets lots of, um, goes through lots of different cycles with the weather mm -hmm. and seasons and uh, a lot of the settlements and issues get stabilized and compacted under all the traffic that occurs under it. So when you pave on top of that, you have less issues. Okay. Um, that's probably a reason for some of them. Um, some of them just may be lower traffic volume. It is an impact of traffic volume does degrade streets quite a bit. And truck volume, it, uh, one truck can equal about a thousand cars of traffic. Uh, it is that much wow. of an impact potentially um, for trucks. So there's a lot of factors there. Drainage is a big thing. Um, so if you can get soils that drain better, regardless of their bearing capacity, they can uh, last quite a while at some time. So okay. um, could be a whole series of things. Um, but again, we do those ratings to try to understand the current condition. Mm -hmm. and, and right now our program is to fix the worst. So yeah. we may have some different recommendations even on some of those downtown streets going forward. Okay, all right. Corey, do you have any other questions or comments? Just, um, I, I might be the only one that doesn't understand this, the inconsistent pavement condition index. I remember you spent a lot of time talking to us about how you get the PCI, but I don't know what the word inconsistent means in front of that. We, we had the consultant um, <laughs> rank all the streets and then those streets that are perceived to be in the worst condition, staff goes out and starts marking the streets for repairs and <coughs> doing a detailed analysis to put together the contract. And when we went out to these particular streets, I think there was about 10 of them, mm -hmm. they were in very good condition. We were surprised and didn't know how they got that information. Um, we have changed our ranking system several times over recent years and we're trying to improve that, but we are using a new system this year that samples the streets and doesn't get, doesn't measure the full length in, a, in an effort to save cost. Um, we are not certain that is working as well as we would like, but instead of redoing the entire study at a big expense, we just remove the streets that are clearly in good shape and we've kept the ones that were in worse shape and we move forward and uh, we'll continue to try and improve upon that next year as well. Last year we used an automated system that sort of a van drives down the street and with all kinds of sensors and <laughs> ultrasonic. Right. Frankly, that didn't work as well as we would like either. So we're continuing mm -hmm. to search to try to get a good, a system that will be consistent from one year to another because our prior system and every time an employee changed we, we used a different company every year a lot of times they would use students to rank them in the field and then they would collect the data and somebody would compile it um, and that wasn't consistent either so we're, we continue to work to try to make that more consistent I'm not certain we found the perfect approach yet okay thank you all right any other questions or comments no. <clears throat> okay um, in that case, we'll go ahead and move the 2012 street improvements to the consent agenda for the full council approval. All right, the last item is the Walnut Street Sidewalk Waterline Rehabilitation Project Condemnation Resolution. Mr. Bailey. This project has been in the works for quite a while and under design. Um, we are at a point where we, um, just because of timing, we'd like to move forward with the project and we have not settled with two property owners. Um, so we would like to move forward with the process of eminent domain so that we can keep the project moving along. Um, we're happy to continue um, answering questions and talking with property owners and still hopeful to reach a settlement um, and, uh, and would continue that process. So we'd like to move forward with um, the adoption of the resolution so we could continue the project. There is, um, there is one issue that came up at a council level um, with one property owner and uh, staff's belief is potentially the goal was to get the <coughs> property owner to um, settle through changing the design. Unfortunately, we were not able to settle with the property owner because of the design change and we just wanted to confirm what council's preferred design was. 
um, whether the, the sidewalk would be wider and have a utility strip or four foot narrow and have no utility strip at all along this property. So um, just some direction there would be helpful. Okay. Um, you know, my recollection is that the, the property owner uh, wanted to minimize the impact to his property as much as possible. So um, we thought that by moving the sidewalk, narrowing it and moving it right up to the street, that we would then be able to come to an, uh, a friendly compromise. And it looks like we're still going to condemnation either way. Mr. Smith, um, how familiar are you? Do you remember when we discussed this? I just remember that we were gonna make an effort to see if it could be moved, mm -hmm. but um, I don't recall um, anything other than that, just you know, yeah. an appeal to see if, if you could make it work. And there, wa there was some concern about um, not having a lot of flexibility there. That's, that's all I remember from it. Yeah. I don't, um, Ms. Bush, do you have any comments? No, I was trying to understand. So the difference between option A and option B is the, rem is the removal of the utility strip and making it four feet or five feet? Is five feet to four. Or five feet to four, right? Just, okay. just on this guy's property along this one property um, and not having the utility strip and pushing it right to the curb after we have to get around the driveway a little bit um, because mm -hmm. there's a ramp up it can't be right there and then we would transition to the back of curb um, through that area um, so there was there was discussion about that we were able to redesign it um, mm -hmm. it has reduced the impact to the property um, but it is it is inconsistent with our standards it's inconsistent <coughs> with DOT standards it's um, it is in an area that is, um, you know, it is a, it's not just a residential subdivision street. It has a higher volume. It's a path to school. So there are some offsetting safety considerations being closer to the road. Um, so we just wanted to make sure council was comfortable if it, with remaining with the design, which pushes it close to the street, if, which is fine. Um, we just want to make sure we're clear on um, what design would be preferred as we proceed. I'm not a big fan of having the sidewalk right up on the road. You see that over mm -hmm. um, in our neighborhood. And I think it's, it's not that offensive when you have it on a quiet street where you're not really worried about the people that are on that sidewalk. But well, you're able to open it. I wasn't able to open it on this machine. Um, I, I can help you with that. Option P, you that's want. nice. I'll just look at yours. But um, <laughs> I do have some, some concern about putting the sidewalk immediately on the road on Walnut Street, given how busy it is and how fast moving the vehicles are on that street. I know the speed limit's like 35, but I'm sure cars move faster than 35. Is it up on the road only in front of this one property? So so it's just for this one property. How, I, it's very difficult for me to see. How wide is that property? Um, first of all, I think, I think it potentially is, <laughs> is um, on the curb on the adjacent property owner as well in order to reach settlement. Um, the properties are fairly narrow in this area. I would estimate between 70 and 80 feet. This particular house the, is very is, is one of the closest to the road along that stretch. Um, it's yeah. been there quite a while. So the, the option is that you would, I'm, com, I'm sorry, I'm confused between the two options. It, it's a, a five foot, wide sidewalk abutting the curb abutting the curb for the entire length for that property owner's property okay or a four foot sidewalk set two and a half feet away from the curb creating that two and a half foot wide utility strip okay i'm sorry i thought it was a four four foot when it was in front of his property yeah Excuse me, a rolling 212 it is four, excuse me. Oh, okay. Okay, so in front of his it's four feet, but everywhere else it's five feet. <clears throat> yes. So you're going along, you have a five foot wide sidewalk, you have two and a half feet of utility <laughs> strip, right? And then you get to his property and it narrows down and it hugs and it goes the to curb. The utility kilt strip, yes. Now, now the, the, in, in this particular area is the four foot sidewalk. As we got further out, there was a stretch of the, um, the road where the utility strip, say from Byram, it gets, the sidewalk gets wider and the utility strip gets wider in that direction. So in this vicinity, closer into town. It's a four foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at least it's consistent width to his neighbors. Correct. Okay. A is 
consistent with the neighbors. Having a four foot wide sidewalk yeah. on 112 is consistent with his neighbors. Yeah. And then it gets, as it goes further east, then it widens out to a five foot wide sidewalk with a wider utility strip. So then the only difference is? Hugging the curb. Is hugging the curb for that particular property. So our question before us is, do we feel comfortable having a sidewalk, a four foot wide sidewalk right up against the road or should we just, since we're going to condemnation anyway, just move forward with what our original plan, our original, original plan was, which was to have a four foot sidewalk with a utility strip. Okay. And we're, and we're definitely in condemnation mode for either option. Yeah. Staff is recommending that you authorize condemnation. We always do our best to continue to work with property owners, answer questions. If they have any counter offers, we review them thoroughly anywhere through the process. What is the amount of property that we're looking for from the homeowner up with both options? It, it's sidewalk easements. It's, it, you know, it's just the difference in that it, it's an extra two and a half feet um, if we go the other route. Um, we, we've worked to put some retaining walls in and minimize impacts anyway. We typically need utility strip, uh, excuse me, um, temporary construction easement beyond that to be able to build it. But yeah. what we need permanently um, would just change by that, that two and a half feet amount. Right. So, but from a staff perspective, I'm sorry, from a staff perspective, A is really the, the one that's most consistent with what we're trying to do. It just depends on what the perspective, if, if you know, we have a safety concern, we have the concern of our town standards in meeting those. We also, you know, struggle trying to do the best we can to adjust projects to meet property owner concerns. So there's, there's competing interest. Uh, staff did not make a recommendation. Well, you want us to. <laughs> we just want your feedback. If it's leave the design as is, we're, we're fine with that. I'm leaving it to eight. You know. You're, we're, we're, we're not having the graphics come up. That's why. Yeah, but she's getting it. She's. Yeah. But she's, just so you know what we're trying to deal with. Yeah. So we can't look at what you're talking about. Okay. So. I can fix this too. Right? So uh, a few more questions about the, the property. There's some markings on these. Do not remove trees. So are there any other impacts to the property owner? Between the two options? I just want to just click on them. Do you want me to fix the others too? Oh, I can get I can get his. Oh, I get you. Is there, are there any other? When we're talking to the property owner about the trees, there's some, they're in decline and that's part of the concern. We're trying to continue to work that out. Um, mm -hmm. We can certainly avoid the trees, but since they're in decline, the little bit of grading we may do near them may damage them further. So that's one of the things we continue to discuss. Um. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand, you know, all of what's in option A and what's in option B and what's, what are the impacts to the property owner? So obviously there's, there's the necessity for the sidewalk and the easements and the utility easement. And so the difference between the two is one is putting it closer to the road and then the other one is not putting it closer to the road and leaving a utility a strip. Utility strip. Uh, that's, that's the primary it. difference. But I besides mean, that, any impact of trees or again, driveway extra, are, are basically the same. Basically, I mean, an extra two feet closer to the trees could have a little bit more impact, but there is likely because of the trees are in decline, there's an impact anyway that we need to work out. Thank you. Gotcha. Uh, what is the home own, the homeowner is, or property owner is not interested in either of these options? The property owner prefers the option with the least impact of their property, no utility strip, but unfortunately we haven't been able to settle to date, even with those changes. And that's option B. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> Sorry. I'm yeah, he likes it. Um, I just want to make absolutely sure. Hold on a second. Let me tell you. Yes. Great. It looks like it's further to the road, closer to the road. Yeah. Yeah. He, we said we moved from A to B, removing that utility strip. 
hoping to move discussions along so that we could avoid condemnation. Well, what's your perspective? I mean, as a person who gets out there and uses sidewalks and no, I, what do you think? I agree with you that putting a sidewalk right up on the street doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, and it, most importantly to the pedestrian, it doesn't feel as safe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about that extra two feet, but there's something about it that just makes you feel a little bit safer. You're not right on the car. Mm -hmm. So I would, as a pedestrian, I would prefer the utility strip being there. Did you say A? A. a. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I was. Okay. I was. All right. Yeah. This will probably be pulled off of consent. <laughs> However, we'll move it forward, authorizing you to move forward with consent or recommending to council that we authorize you to move forward with condemnation, for, but following option A is the plan. And um, if council members choose to, they may remove it for discussion. Thank you, council. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the June meeting of the operations committee. Thank you. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary website at townofcary.org.